Hi, everybody. So good to be with you once again. Thanks for tuning in for these encouraging words together. Here's our chance to pause wherever we are, to reflect on some truths from God's Word, to come before Him in prayer and find in Him strength, comfort, hope, security, whatever we need. He is the author of life. He's the one that meets us right where we are. We can trust Him, and He's here to meet with us even right now. Thanks for tuning in today. Here last, uh, the end of last week, I was outside hanging Christmas lights. It's that time of year, right? And so at our house, there's a string of lights that we like to put along the edge of the house and around the bushes. I have an inflatable nativity that lights up the front yard as well. It's a fun and festive time, and we like to do our part in the neighborhood. Our little cul-de-sac can be dark. There is a street light. Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's not. I don't know what makes the difference. And in those times when that street light goes out, it can be a little dark down there in that cul-de-sac. So it's good to bring light and to light it up. I love the festive lights. We were out looking in Wentzville at Rotary Park uh, with family here just this past week, walking through, even though it was cold, taking in many of the Christmas lights. What a festive time of year. You know, the Bible uses the imagery of light, particularly in association with the coming of Christ. You know, one of the reasons we put up lights at Christmas is because Christ is considered to himself to be the light of the world, and he comes to bring us light. Why do we need light? Well, we tend to be trapped in darkness in our little cul-de-sac of life, so to speak. There isn't enough light to go around. That in and of ourselves, our sins bring a, a blanket of darkness from which we need rescue and redemption. So Jesus comes to be that light. Listen to what John says in his gospel. You know, Matthew and Luke, they give us narrative accounts of the birth of Christ. Matthew gives it kind of from Joseph's perspective. Luke gives it from Mary's perspective. We see the coming of the Magi to visit the Christ child. In Matthew's gospel, we see the arrival of shepherds in uh, and the army of angels in the sky in Luke's gospel. They take on each of a different perspective, but in John's gospel, he gives us more the theological treatise. He's the one that describes who God is, what God is like, the nature of God, how Jesus is united with God, part of God himself, somehow together that they are one, and how Jesus comes into the world to live among us. This is what John says in his first chapter in the ninth, ver in the ninth verse. He says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. And that's how he begins to introduce the figure of Jesus as Jesus is born as a baby, takes on flesh, and becomes one of us, God in human form. What an amazing miracle that is. So the true light, there are lots of false lights. There are lots of things that promise to bring enlightenment to us, satisfaction of the soul, but they only leave us empty in the end. What we need is the true light of God, only found in Christ. And so John says, the true light that was giving light to everyone. And really, that is the good news of the gospel, that all those who look to Jesus, who put their hope in him, who choose to believe in him, comes the promise of this light filling our heart, filling our soul, giving us a sense of purpose and meaning. Um, without, without Christ, I don't know how people find purpose and meaning, but in him, he lights our way. He lights up our life, so to speak. The true light with, that, uh, that gives light to everyone, which is good news for those of us who sometimes think maybe we don't deserve that light. Have you ever thought that way? We look at the practices of our past, the mistakes that we've made, the errors of our life, and we think, you know, it's I've come too far. I don't even know that I can change now. I don't, I don't know how God could even love me, and yet he always does. His love is immense. It's greater than our misgivings and our sins, and the light that comes from Christ is meant to purify us, cleanse us, make us new again, fill us full of hope and peace and joy. That true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. That's what Christmas is all about. You know, this whole season of Advent, we've been focusing on the coming of Christ, how he came so long ago, how he comes anew to every heart who looks to him, how one day he will come again and establish his kingdom once again here 
on the earth. Jesus is Lord, and he calls us to live for him and to experience his love for ourselves. This Christmas season, as we take in many of the Christmas lights all around us, let's open our hearts to the one who is the true light. May he fill us with his goodness as we put our trust in him. And if you feel like your life has been overshadowed by darkness, by heartache, by disappointment, by tragedy, by sickness, by so many of the negative things of this life, know that those things don't have to be the end of your story. Jesus wants to come with light, with warmth, with hope, with healing. And we can trust him. With that thought, let's turn to him in prayer, even right now. Lord, we look to you, the one who is the light of the world. You came as the true light so long ago. You still are that to every soul that looks to you. So Jesus, we turn to you and we ask you for an outpouring of your grace, that you would help us to know, one, that you're there, two, how great your love is, and three, how much we really need you, and that you'll take us as we are. Lord, we open our hearts afresh to you in this moment. Pour out your Holy Spirit afresh to us. Fill us with your light. Lord, this Christmas season, there are many happy memories. There are many happy traditions. And for some, Lord, there are moments of grief. There is sadness because of who's no longer here or heartaches of past Christmases. Lord, I pray that regardless of what emotional state we find ourselves in, that as we look to you, you would bring the light of comfort the light of love, the light of your peace to every heart. May we find our contentment and our hope in you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for loving us no matter what. Lord, though many times we are fickle in our devotion, you are constant. You are the faithful one. Work your grace in us. Perfect us. Transform us into the likeness of Christ. Fill us with your light. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Know this, the Lord is for you. And when Jesus came into the world, he came to save sinners, which means there's hope for all of us, you and me included. Amen. Thanks for tuning in today. Here at Friendship Village, we work hard to show you these videos three times a day. They're brand new at 4.30. They're repeated 8 o'clock at night and once again 8 o'clock the following morning. We do that every day, Monday through Friday. And uh, you can always uh, watch on Channel 900, which is about to change. Help us spread the word if you're part of Friendship Village here. Um, I think this week yet, yeah, the change is coming. We are changing from Channel 900 to Channel 2493. I need lots of folks to help spread the word. That doesn't roll off the tongue as well. We have no control over that. That's something our internet provider is doing. So um, adjust with us, and pretty soon you'll look for us on 900 and think, where'd we go? We're on 2493. But if you want to see us without interruption, anytime, day or night, these videos are available by typing in Encouraging Words with Burt Campbell on your smartphone, on your computer tablet, on your internet browser, um, on the internet, It'll take you to YouTube, and you can see all of our videos there, even right now. If you're watching online, does someone need some encouragement or hope today? Consider sending them the link to uh, today's video. You can also subscribe to these videos, get notifications in your news feed when new ones come out by clicking on my face right here, or you can click on the box below to see any in our past history. Trust in the Lord. Let him be your light. God bless. We'll see you next time.